Yo, what's up, everybody? Jumping yeah, and I am back with my noob's guide for Elden Ring. And in the first episode, we got really overpowered. Now, we are going to go around and do every single dungeon in this first area. We're going to also try to get all the important items on the map. Now, before we do that, we're going to get a couple more potions. So right now, I am at the Storm Hill Shack. If you remember this spot, there was a girl. We talked to her. And she has a trigger. Either you can give her this one quest item that you will get from the actual main castle area. Or if you move to like up here or over here, you just have to get out of the first area. If you leave the first area, she's going to go to the round table. It doesn't really affect her quest in any real way. But basically when you come back here, there's going to be a golden seed. So we're going to pick that up. Now we're going to go back to the capital area. And then we will come back to the first place. So this is going to be the only time we're going to come over here. So the reason why we're coming over here, though, is to get five golden seeds. There are five over here. We're going to go to this bridge, and then we're going to travel around and collect all the golden seeds. Then we'll come back, and we'll start working on that first area. Now, there is something I wanted to talk about. But first, let me show you where to put your beacon. So there's like a bridge here. Put your beacon there. And there's like this little thing up here, put a beacon there. And that's where we're going to be going. Now one thing I've kind of decided is that I'm not going to get every item in the open world. I will be getting all the items if possible. I might miss a couple just because I'm human. But I'm going to get all the items from all the main castles, the side castles, the dungeons. And I'm going to try to get all the items that are important in the open world. At least what I deem to be important. Ashes of War and spells some armor some weapons all of that i deem important what i don't deem important is what i just got back there if i miss something like that some grease a golden rune too i'm not tripping on that if i go around and collect every single thing these videos are going to be five hours long and i don't want that the first episode was two and a half hours some people complained a little bit that it was a little too long now I feel like that was important for the first episode, but from now on I want these to be an hour, if not an hour and maybe 30 minutes. So we can actually go ahead and jump up here to rob that. Now technically, all the enemies we encounter, even here, we can fight because we're going to destroy them. Let me show you. Boom. Little guy, but easily can kill him. So if you want to fight, you can, but I'm going to be going past these enemies because we're not doing this section. So the whole idea of the series is that we started off, we went all over the place to get overpowered. Now we're going to return back to the first area. We're going to do everything there. Then we're going to go and do a side castle. Then we're going to go and do the main castle. And then when we're done with that, we'll move on to another area and do the same thing. We'll do all the dungeons, get all the important items. Then we'll go and do the main castle and the side castle. There's always a main castle and there's pretty much always a side castle. Okay, so if you come up here, there's going to be a grace. So let's hop off and let's grab the grace. Now to get the first golden seed, all you really have to do is just go down and follow this path. It's just straight in front of you. And then what we're going to do is to get to the other golden seeds, it can be a little bit annoying. There is an item, so I'll grab it on the way. And again, it's some grease. Do I really need to go and get that? Probably not. But there is a way of getting to the top of this one staircase where these golden seeds are. It could be kind of trolly and difficult, maybe for a newer player. So we're going to take the easy route. So the first one's just over here. We're going to pick this up, and then we're going to go back. Now, if you can fast travel, you could just fast travel back. But we can also just go this way. Go up the hill, but not the way we came. And one thing I hate is all the fog. And I hate it when it's night. It's hard to see for you guys. And I don't like that. But we can jump up with the horse doing double jumps over here. And we need to just get up this mountain. Because what we're going to do is we're going to get past all these war machines. Now these war machines, it's catapults, things like that. The guys can hit you and they can snipe you. Literally, they can shoot... A dick off a bee. I'm serious. It's that bad. But if you stick to the right over here, they'll never even target you. If you're on the left, they will. If you're in the middle, they will. 
but on the right for some reason they don't bother which is good for us so now we just need to jump up and then we can get behind them once we get to this point they really can't even hit us even if they do try to target us look he's shooting they can't hit us because of the angle it's impossible so we're just going to ride past them and technically if you wanted to explore this area you would first want to kill all those guys then you could explore if they're shooting you every time they hit you they're going to knock you off the horse every single time it's really annoying so there's this giant doorway here we're going to go through there's going to be a grace there's also a mini boss in this area well to be fair there's actually several mini bosses in this area but we're going to hit the grace and we're going to avoid all that we're not trying to deal with it you could fight it you could beat it you're so op that you definitely can but we're just not going to for the video so in front of us that guy standing there that is a mini boss if you want to avoid him just go to the left if you do trigger him you can run from him and he will come back you can always beat him later and we're going to come down here there's another golden tree this one is actually going to have two golden seeds on it which is epic now we need to ride down the staircase there is another mini boss that will spawn on the staircase but we can avoid this guy really easily really all you got to do is just go over here on the left and run down the hill his trigger is about the halfway point of the staircase so as long as you avoid that point he's not even going to spawn but he will chase you he will actually chase you down the steps so watch out okay so i'm just jumping back to the steps and now there is another map for this area so let's pick that up get it out the way and here we go two more golden seeds now at this point you should have already upgraded your potion it should be at plus five from the first episode and now with these golden seeds we just got we're going to be able to get two more so at this point i'm going to allocate you should have eight healing and two fp that's good for this build we don't need fp that much but we are using our ash of war and it's really good so you're going to need to restore it but the main one you want is the healing and of course like i said if you haven't yet use up all of your sacred tears and you should have at least plus five right now and technically i could go get that higher i could get it to plus eight like right now easily i could even get it to plus 10 right now but we're not going to because we have to go out of our way and plus five is good enough at our current level so where we're going to go now is we're going to go back down here and there is a ton of things to do here the first place i'm going to go is over here summer water village we're going to go to this grace we found it in the first episode so i'm going to fast travel over here and i'm going to cut it ahead and i'm going to see you guys in a moment all righty well we're going to go and fight this boss over here it's in the village there are a couple basic items around i might miss one you can let me know maybe you can also summon your wolves if you want for this fight i'm not going to it's so easy i'm gonna trigger it it's always gonna teleport so that's always gonna happen i'm gonna grab this real quick now you can actually fight this thing while on your horse it might be easier on the horse there's also another item right here let's pick that up now we need to find it why am i wielding my shield very funny okay where did it go there it is all right so you can lock on if you want i'm not gonna bother i'm just gonna smack it ride right past whenever you see this thing like raise up run away that's what you need to do smack it there's a bunch of skeletons i'm just holding the r2 button down doing this by the way if you want to get off of your horse you can also go ahead and just do your Ash of War, your L2 and then R2, and you'll take it out no problem. Now, we're going to get an item, the Death Root. We need to give that to this guy named D. Now, currently, he's going to be at the round table, and we're going to progress his quest. Now, because we've done what we did, where we went around and did all this on the other side, he's not going to show up by this rock. But when you first start the game, if you come here and beat that boss, he's going to be by the rock. Now we need to find this one little spot and we can get a talisman. So let's go and do that. It's just right over here. Let me pull the map up so you can see where I'm at. 
And now I'm going to hop off. We're going to use one of these, which is a sword stone key. And it's going to open up that door. You're going to see those fog doors. Now when you come down here, there's a bunch of dogs. I don't know what breed they are, but there's tons of dogs down here. Let's go ahead and open up the door. And we can get the talisman. Now this talisman, pretty good. Especially for a melee build. It's going to give us 18% stamina regeneration. Now the talisman that I have on currently, we will get more slots for the talisman. We can have four equipped. For now we can only have one. And the legendary one for 20 levels, much better in my opinion. Now I still have some of those beacons on the map. Now if I don't want to zoom out the map and find them, what I can do is just do this. You can only have five out at once, so if you just put them like in a position and then remove them all, you can get rid of all the ones on the map. So where we're going to go from here is we are going to go ahead and head down to the artist shack. Because of our position, we can get down there. Now I already unlocked it. You can see where it is on the map. We can also drop down here as well, so I'm going to put a beacon there. I have a little marker down there to remind me that there's something down there. Now this would technically kind of fall in the category of not necessary. The artist shack I do think is necessary. It's a grace, it's a painting, those are important that we want to collect all of that. But the items I'm going to get afterwards, don't know how necessary it is to show for the walkthrough. I'm going to, but in general these are some of the items I would think I might avoid. So we can see the shack, hopefully gravity is going to be nice. Took a little damage, but we okay. And now let's go ahead and come on over. There is an item that's right there. And you can also grab the painting that's gonna be in the room. Let's hop off the horse. Now the paintings, we have to find the spot to turn them in, but you can get spells, you can get armor, and the grace, make sure you light it. Now we're gonna head in this other direction where I put the other beacon. And there's gonna be a bunch of graves and we can rob them like we've been doing the entire time. There is a cookbook over here. So in a way, I kind of feel like cookbooks might be kind of important. I mean, not totally, but they're also like not bad. So let's go ahead and grab all the stuff. And we are just going to have a very chill adventure together. Exploring and getting all the stuff and then going through the dungeons. First, I'm just grabbing some of the more important items I feel on the map. Then we will go ahead and go through the dungeons. So just pick up all this stuff. And this one, I believe you have to hop up to get. And now we can drop down. We can also get rid of that marker I had on the map. And you can also see where I'm at on the map. So, you might want to hop off your horse for this. It's going to be a little bit easier to drop down like this off the horse and there's gonna be like a giant bear down here and a bunch of doggos they're gonna be having a fight now you are more than strong enough to deal with this gravity will not kill you here by the way but just to save time I'm just gonna grab the item and run for it see you later oh wait a minute you see that I'm gonna talk about that in a second there we go that wolf had gold eyes. If you ever see that, those enemies are worth killing because they're going to be worth like four or five times the amount of experience. So if you can get lucky and find one that's like a strong enemy that's worth a lot, you can get a lot of XP that way. It's real nice. Now I need to actually go ahead and rest to de-aggro the enemies. But from this position, from this church, I'm going to show it on the map again. We've been here before. Where we're going to go... It's right here and there's gonna be a side quest right there so we're gonna trigger that quest now with the recent update which if you're watching this years from now I'm talking about an update that came out it was like the first real update that came out since the game was released but with the update they updated this guy's quest so he has more options now more things I hear a scarab I bet you it's a normal one though yeah that's a normal one if it's red like that, it's just for potions, not really worth taking out. But in the future, when it comes to a lot of these quests, if you're watching this walkthrough, who knows, there could be more steps. That's one of the only problems. So he's going to start talking, and he is annoying. He will not stop talking. 
Now there's a ton of monkeys down here, tons of them. But if you just ride up to them and attack them, I don't even lock on when I'm on the horse, if you can't tell. Just one shot everybody. One more. You don't have to kill the monkeys, I don't think. But we're going to go up and talk to him now. He's going to want us to retake that fort. We've already been to the fort. Already messed with it. But we did not kill the knight. I'm pretty sure it's just the knight enemy you have to kill. You don't have to clear the entire fort. And to be honest, I don't know what they were thinking with this guy. Because he's going to say something. At least I think he says something that's very wrong. He will tell you about the fort. He will ask you to actually go and do it. And yeah, he actually does say it. And then he says, like, wait until dawn and he'll go to the fort and you can claim your reward. That is BS. That's not true at all. So the fort, this is the one over here. And we already got the grace from earlier. You will have to go and talk to him again. Then he'll give you the reward. Then he will go to the fort. It's super confusing. I don't know why they have him say that. It's just wrong. He says, wait till dawn and I will go to the fort and you can get your reward. It is wrong. All right, I'm just going to hop off the horse, do a little jump attack. If you do that, by the way, you can do a jump attack. It's really nice. And we can guard the counter. There we go. Anytime an enemy will bounce off your shield, you will get a guaranteed hit with your guard counter. That's the reason why great shields are so much better. Just because way more enemies are going to actually bounce off with a great shield compared to a medium one. So in here, you do have to watch out. There's a rat. Another rat. Ugh, come here. Take him out. You gotta watch out for the fire bombs. If you're standing by an exploding barrel, you can take a lot of damage. So make sure that doesn't happen. Speaking of exploding barrels, right there. Now right there, I just did a roll attack. I haven't talked about roll attacks, but they are decent. If you roll, you do an attack. You can't do a heavy attack when you do it. But they can be okay. Pick up the item in here. Now, the main thing we got to do is just kill the knight. That's it. We don't have to kill everything, I don't think. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I'm going to do a sprinting R2. That's actually really good on the sword, the sprinting R2. And the knight is going to be a joke. So just do your weapon art. Got him. He's going to drop an Ash of War. That's a really good one, by the way. God knows if you're watching this in the future, is it still going to be good? They have adjusted it, nerfed it, made it cost more health to use. They've already messed with that multiple times now. So I don't know what they're going to do in the future. So I think we're done. Like, there is still a guy over here. I'll go and kill him. But you don't have to. I'm pretty sure it's just the knight. That's all that matters. So we're going to go back. Because of the update, you can see him on the map now. It's so awesome. I love that. And we need to go and talk to him. He's going to then move to the fort. We can talk to him at the fort. I'm not going to. I will do it. But I'm not going to do it for the video. The reason why is because I do want to save time. As much time as I can save the main point, I'm just telling you now, after you talk to him and you get your reward, you can go to the fort, talk to him there, and later on, he's going to actually have an extended part of his quest, which they recently added, but it's much, much later on. And there's also a girl, you have to do her quest as well. Once you're done with both and you reach a certain point in the game, that's when you can see the updated version of his quest. So talk to him. He's going to give you the reward, and I think it might be here that you can pledge your allegiance to him. Just do it because of the quest. Let's see. It might be later at the fort. Yep, that's it. Pledge your service. Just do it for the quest. I know he's annoying, but if you're trying to do all the quests and everything, you got to do it, unfortunately. And then, like I said, go back to the fort. You can talk to him. And you're good. I'm not going to because he's annoying. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast travel over here again. We're going to go this way. There is a merchant. And in fact, I mean, there's really nothing along the way. There is a grace. Oh, there is something on the way. Okay, I was thinking, should I just cut to the other grace? 
but I'm going to fast travel. There is an item on the way. Alrighty, well, I'm going to cut it ahead. I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, well, it is nighttime. I don't like it being nighttime, but to be fair, I don't mind it right now. First of all, it's not that bad. You can still see everything. That's fine. But there's going to be a couple bosses, and I'm pretty sure, yep, we're really close to a couple bosses, so we're going to do them. So if you want to make it night, make it night. So this is the way we're going. We're heading towards the Grace. There is a merchant on the way if you want to talk to him and check out his inventory. Some of the experience that you're getting, if you want to buy like the different recipes and things like that from the merchants, if you're selling them, go for it. Same with like stone keys. Stone keys are kind of worth buying. So there's an enemy on this bridge. Let's just charge up our heavy and smack him. Wow. He didn't die. That's a shame. Now, there is something I want to talk about. It's a little bit of a regret, and I want to apologize. Because of what I did, where I went all the way over here, I believe this was the trigger. There was an NPC over here. He's a jar. You can talk to him, he's stuck. You have to, like, charge up your heavy, get behind him, and knock him out. And he will give you an item, and this is the first time you can ever meet him. Here's the thing. He is not here anymore. It did not mess up his quest, though. We could still do his quest. His next location will be actually over here. Where is the cave? Right here. This cave. He's going to be in there. And everything will be fine. It's just like I said, because of what I did, he moved. So if I could go back in time, I probably would have came here to talk to him first. Then I would have done what I did because I wanted to show that. So over here, there's going to be a camp. Now, in these enemy camps, you will find items, sometimes weapons. There's a lot of stuff in this one. There's a decent shield in this one. But let's just go around. There is a giant knight over here, so smack him hard. Smack him again. Be careful not to get knocked off your horse. If you want to get off, it's always okay to get off your horse. But we're just taking everybody out. And there is a chest. This is the chest. I believe this has the shield in it. It's a fairly decent shield. I think the brass shield personally is much better, but that's a okay shield for its weight. It's a medium shield, I'm pretty sure. So there is another enemy over here. Let's go ahead and take him out. Just a stupid dog. I hate dogs. And there's a guy over here. Come on. So here's the front. Oh man, okay. You guys are not friendly. I don't like you. Oh, here's a little trick, by the way. If you ever want to do a charge up heavy jump attack, you can do that. Boom. Kind of nice. Sometimes you can hit enemies that are like flying or something with that. Okay, so you see this thing that's like in the front? We need to go around and we're going to go up this hill back here. I'm going to show you on the map in a second. So let me just ride around, pull up my map up here. I'm going to remove this sword. But up here is where we want to go. There's going to be a guy on a horse. You can see him in the distance. He's a normal enemy. But he's going to drop an Ash of War. And I actually really like this Ash of War. And the reason why is because... You can actually put this Ash of War on another weapon. And you can pull it out. Use the buff. And buff yourself. It's Golden Val. That's a really nice one. Definitely don't want to miss that Ash of War. So go ahead and hop up here. There's going to be a scarab. This is kind of pointless. And I'm going to be honest. It's just going to give you a somber stone one. And now, let's go to where the cliff is. And this is where the camp is as well. But this is how we can jump up on that roof. And we are going to get a weapon up here. And it's a pretty decent weapon. I like the lances in this game. I like all of the heavy spears. I was about to say, is that a golden eye owl? Poor thing. I need your egg. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to head over here. And this is the War Master's Shack. So, if you want to put a beacon, but just ride on over. There is going to be a boss here. The trigger for the boss is confusing. I have no idea, to be honest. Like the Grace, you can talk to this guy. And 
basically always say the first option most of the time. That's really what you need to do. He's going to sell you some Ashes of War. Now the one you definitely want to buy, we want this for our Great Shield later, is No Skill. No Skill is one of the best ones in the game. Just because we can use our right hand weapon, Ash of War. So that's why it's so good. I'm going to buy a couple more. So just buy like three, four maybe? I think that's the trigger. I'm not sure. Also, you do have to talk to him. That's the other trigger. Talk to him. Make sure there's no more option of actually talking to him. Now, let's see what happens when we rest. If it's nighttime, you need to make it nighttime. Okay, he's still there. Let me rest again. If he's gone, we're going to get the boss. Okay, let's fast travel real quick. Maybe this will work. If not, you might have to buy four things from him. Maybe that's the trigger. Yep, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy one more. I bet you that's what it is. Very strange trigger. But let's see. Rest. If he ain't there, we got it. Yep, we got it. So you have to buy four. The moment this thing starts to spawn, do your L2, your R2, do your L2 again, do your R2 again. Ah, oh, don't get grabbed. And look, knock him down. Easiest fight ever. You get a lot of free hits there. Now what's really cool about this guy is that when you kill him, he is going to drop you a bell. Now this bell you can give to the merchant that is at the round table, and you can actually buy bones for animals. That's useful if you want to make arrows. Like, if you have to farm the bones, oh man, is that annoying. Now these guys are kind of cool. They actually do have a giant curb sword, like the one we're using. If you can get it, and if you really wanted to, you could upgrade it, and then you could dual wield these curb swords. That's a lot of fun. I really love dual building these swords. Now just up here, let me show you on the map. So there's the shack. We can go ahead and find all these graves. And we can rob them, just like we've been doing. Of course, I pressed the button and it didn't pick it up. But like I said before, we're just having a chill little adventure here. We're about to get another boss though. Another nighttime boss that's going to be over here. And this boss... Should be very easy. You can totally cheese the boss though. Totally cheese the boss if you want to. There's going to be like five giants. And the giants can actually kill the boss. Because giant enemies will always hit each other. If they're close to each other and they're trying to attack you. And you're just like juking them on the horse. They will keep hitting each other over and over again. And that's including the boss. Now we don't need to do that because we're so OP, but in general, it is something that you can do. Okay, so where we're going, hopefully I can pull the map up, but you see all these giants over here? So here I am on the map. See all the giants? That's what we need. There is an item that's in that statue. So what you wanna do is just hit one of the giants and get the giant to chase you over to the statue and it will break it. The rule for these statues, you're going to find these like several times. The rule is always you need a giant, either a giant bear or one of these giants. You cannot use another enemy that you think is big. You're like, oh, that's a big enemy. That should do it. <clears throat> it's got to be a giant. That is the rule. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kill all of these guys. One, because guess what? They're worth a thousand experience. And at the beginning of the game, that is... Pretty nice. But we do not want these enemies getting in our fight with this bird. It's going to be the boss. We just don't want it. It's annoying, to be honest with you. You can use them to cheese, but we don't need to cheese. We are OP. So take him out. Come on. Give me all that juicy XP. And I'm pretty sure the bird is going to be right up here. Again, let me show you on the map. Never mind, I can't. Maybe after the fight. Come here, you stupid bat. Ugh. I think it's when you come up here. Yep, there it is. All right, charge up the heavy on the horse. Smack this thing. Ride around in circles. Ride around in circles. Tap your light button. Just ride around in circles. It works like a charm. Okay. If you need to heal, you can always just back away. And heal Chug! Chug! Ow. Don't knock me off the horse. Just die. 
Now, again, if you want to hop off the horse and do your Ash of War, you're going to do some crazy good damage. But that's basically it for that boss, and we just got a talisman from doing that. There's one more nighttime boss, and you know what? Let's go and get him. So here is the point of the map where that boss spawns, and the other nighttime boss is going to be on this bridge right here. So let's actually go get him. Okay, it's still nighttime, and guess what? This is pretty cool because I need to actually clear that gate front runes too. So I'll kill two birds with one stone here. So let's ride on over here. We've been through here before. I gave you the warning about this boss at the beginning of the first episode. I said, like, make it day, that way the boss isn't here. Well, we're OP now. Again, you can fight on the horse. It's kind of, ooh, it's kind of easy. Be reactive, though. Let him swing, and then we're going to come in and get a quick smack. Now, you can hit the knight on the horse or the horse itself. Either way, it's fine, because you'll eventually knock him off the horse if you can kill his horse. Okay. Come on back. Watch out. Be reactive. Let him swing first. And again, I'm not locking on. I really don't like locking on on the horse. You can, though. And there you go. Real easy fight, especially on the horse. It's kind of annoying to do that fight on foot. That stupid knight moves around like crazy. He just does. And it's frustrating. Now... Let me think about where I want to go next. I do have a spot I want to go. It's going to be over here. Now, I haven't shown you how to get this grace yet. Actually, I almost forgot. We're going to clear these runes real quick. There's several things to get here. One is a whetstone key. Not a whetstone key, but a whetstone. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you from your grace to put ashes of war on your weapon. And it unlocks more options. The more of these whetstones you find, the more options you're going to get. So behind these wagons, you can actually find some chests. So the first one is over here. Pick that up. Oh yeah, I guess I should talk about this too real quick. You see all the particles? Look at that. It's beautiful, right? That's from the giant tree. It will do this sometimes. And you will get an experience buff. You can see the buff if you look below my stamina. It's that little hand buff, and I believe it's a fairly decent experience buff. But I have heard before that it doesn't work. I don't know if that's true or not. It's supposed to be like a 40% buff. So here is the other chest with the other item in it. Let's pick it up. And now we just need to go and get the whetstone, really. Let me double check and see if I've already gotten this item. I was farming this area in the first episode, so I probably got it when I was recording. No! Okay, there it is right there. Totally a pointless item, but whatever. Now I'm just going to come in here just to double check for items. And we can totally kill all these enemies. These enemies are so easy now because we're so OP. Hello, how you doing? Don't forget, by the way, if you charge up your attack, you can ride into the enemy like this. And you'll hit him. You'll actually hit him with the sword down. Look, sword down. And before I even, like, did the swing, I hit the enemy. Smack him good. Let's go get the other one real quick. Hello. I do like fighting on the horse. It is a lot of fun. The shield guys, though, are always annoying. Come on, swing, bro. Ow. Just die. And he actually dropped an item. He rarely ever drops an item, that guy. Rarely. Oh, nice. Hello. I got a twofer. Okay, so where you want to get the whetstone is these steps here. Just walk on down, and you got to open the door. I think there's a talisman down here too, but the main thing is the whetstone. You want that whetstone. Pick that up. No, it's an Ash of War. And there's the whetstone knife. You're going to get more of those, and the more you get, the more options you get for the different scaling on the standard weapons. So an example is you can have different scaling, like you can have heavy which is going to be pure strength, keen, which is pure dex, and eventually you'll get like magic, and holy, blood, all types of options, but you got to find those whetstones. That's what they do. By the way, this is a telescope. You can actually go to the telescope and use it, and you can get an overview of the map. You can actually look at stuff. It's really nice. So let's go ahead and head down there. 
I really should make it daytime now. We're done with the nighttime bosses. We really only need to make it daytime. But we did already find these ruins and we didn't do anything with them. There is a boss here and an NPC. Now the NPC will sell you sorceries. That's really nice, especially if you're starting out as a sorcerer or something like that. You definitely want to find this NPC and do this boss battle. But this NPC has a very like complicated long side quest but that's going to come later that's only going to come later now this convoy right here we can go ahead and get this item so let's just attack this giant and we can pretty much just kill him if we kill one of them it's going to stop and then we don't have to kill all the enemies i want that xp though give me that xp you should probably level up too don't be holding on to like a good chunk of it XP. It's just never a good idea in these games. It takes five seconds to go and level up. It really does. But let's pick that up. We don't really have to fight all those guys. There is an item over here. Let me go check it out. I know it's something totally pointless. There it is in the corner. Give me that. I hate that item. I really do. Because that's a crafting material, those butterflies. And I can't tell you how many times like you go out of your way to get an item and it's that stupid butterfly the other one is the mushroom you will find so many mushrooms and you go out of your way to try to like figure out how do i get up there you get up there and you're like it's a mushroom oh my god all right we're taking this stupid flower out try not to get poisoned if you do it's not a big deal always just fast travel or something so hop off let's pick up all the stuff some of this stuff is from the enemies Give me everything. Thank you. And there's going to be a staircase. There's always a staircase in these ruins. Every single one in the game has a staircase. If you can't find it, you're missing it. Somewhere around, you will find it. Now, if we come down, there's the boss battle. It's going to be easy. And then we can talk to the NPC. Let's lock on. Again, you can summon if you want, but you don't need to. Be reactive. Wait for an opening. And then go crazy. Here we go. Opening! And now we gonna slash. Man, it works like a charm. It really does. L2, R2. Game over. Open up the door. Now we can talk to the NPC. Like I said, just go ahead and say you want to learn. They do this a lot. You really never want to say, hmm, you know what? I don't want to talk to you. It's not really a good idea. Okay, now this is an interesting thing I want to talk about. Giving a scroll or a prayer book. You're going to find prayer books for incantations. You're going to find scrolls for sorceries. Don't give the NPCs either of those. Just don't do it. The reason why is because there is a turtle. I know it sounds weird. A giant turtle in this church. The giant turtle is much better for giving that stuff to because that turtle is never going to move. That turtle's always going to be there. And when you give like these scrolls to like an NPC, that NPC at some point is going to move. And you might not know where it goes. And if you didn't buy all the spells, you're like, oh my god, where is this thing? And you just can't find it. Now luckily, because of what they did, you can now see it says the NPC's name and stuff. But yeah. Okay. Now while I'm still over here, I guess I'll clear the rest of this little stuff. There was another camp... In the first episode, we pass through this camp, and I'm going to go and clear it, get the stuff. Then we will pretty much start to do the dungeons. Like, we're getting close, okay? We're getting close. I know that we haven't done... I guess we have done some. Hey, look at this. I'm glad I walked out. There's an item up there. Let me figure out how to get up there. I don't know if I've ever gotten that before. I know you can probably drop off the top. That makes a lot of sense to me. Let me see. That's probably the way to do it. There's always an easy way. Can you hop up here? I think you can. So let's come up this. Yep, very easy. Just hop on up. The horse is amazing. And now... Where's the item? Um, I'm gonna walk off on foot. This is gonna be easier. Please land on it. There we go. Pick that up. Okay, another crafting material. A lot of times you're going to go out of your way to find a crafting material. 
And what's really messed up about it is that at first it might be okay to get that crafting material, but the only issue is that later on there are going to be a million ways of just farming it. Like, it's going to be growing somewhere. You just go there, pick it up, reload, do it again. That's the only issue. Down here, there is a scarab. Let me show you on the map. I'm right next to this grace, and it's in this water. There's a scarab down here. This is actually a pretty cool Ash of War. And that is unsheath for Katana wielding alpha males. Awesome, awesome move. Pick that up. Ooh, nice. Now there is, before we get to the camp, there is a zombie guy who will turn into a giant bear over here. And he's going to drop a special item that will let you respec if you want to change your build. So that is something you definitely want to get for later. It's this guy right here. Smack him. And oh my god. Gotta watch out. The bears, even though we're OP, those bears are still... Oh my god, it just stuns me to death. Come on, fall over, die. There we go. Okay, this camp, if I remember right, this camp is actually really annoying. It's annoying because of the freaking spellcasters. These spellcasters are stupid. Yep, they're already shooting me. Always pick up these guys' items. I love their armor. I really do. I would actually even equip it. If I want to farm... Ow! If I want to farm for it, I would use it. You gotta keep moving here, because the spellcaster is gonna annoy you to death if you don't. Okay, come on. You can go up there to get them. But one of the spellcaster spots, ow, one of the spots, we've already got the item over there. Ow, I'm going to go get him. I'm getting one of these guys. So if you remember from the first episode, there is an item up here. It's one of the scrolls, so we got it. We don't really have to come back up here, but just to get rid of him because he's going to annoy us the whole time if we don't. And there's another one on the other side. We can go get him as well. He's going to be up here. Can we make it up? You can, but you just got to find... Here we go. Jump up like here. Alright, you little bastard. Come here and die. Now we have the freedom to actually not get stunned by the caster. There we go. Give me all these items. There should be a chest here. I know there's a chest here. Yeah, there it is. Let's get this. I think this might be it, though. I could be wrong, but outside of the basic little items and the scroll, which is an important item, and also up here there is a starlight shard, which we already got. Besides all that, I think the weapon is the only other thing that's up here. So, yeah, we're good. Let me try to open my map, and I can get rid of this now, since we've done it. And where am I going to go... I'm going to go over here. I was talking about this before. I was trying to talk about this before. And you know what? We're in the position where this is actually the best way of going. I'm going to put a marker right there on that spot. And we're going to head over there. Because one, there is the grace, which I did not show how to get that grace. Oh, this is going to be annoying. I don't want to go down that way. I'm scared. I really don't like gravity in these games. I just don't. Anybody who watches me, they know what happens. I always fall off. I always die. My name is Jumpin', and I suck at jumping. That's just the reality of it. Okay, let's head over to where I put the little marker. There's an item over here, so let's grab this. Any item on the way of somewhere I'm going, I'm going to grab, even if it's something so stupid as that. That's a stupid item. But there is a guy over here. This is not necessary. You do not need to do this. It's okay if you don't. It's a Ronin. He's cool. I mean, he's a badass, let's be honest. But you can talk to him and just talk to him until he repeats himself. But this is the first time you can meet this guy. And then later on, he's going to come and help us and stuff. You don't need to talk to him to have him come and help you. He's always going to come. And normally, that's going to be the first time you ever speak to him. So we got to find the grace real quick. It's just over here. There it is. So find the grace. And then from here, we're going to drop down to that beach down there. To get down there, though, we're going to go this way, which is south of the Grace on the compass. 
You can see the hill. There is an item down here, I believe, but this is not where we're going to drop off. Let's go get the item real quick. Be careful. Pick that up. Oh, wow. Crab eggs. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. If I miss a couple crab eggs out there in the open world, I don't think anyone's going to get on me too hard about that. So is it here? This is it. This is the spot. So it's not on the bottom level, but it's kind of on the medium level. And above me, that's wrong too. So you just got to look off. You see that? Again, gravity is confusing. I would think that would kill me, but watch. Nothing. And then there's some wind. We can jump into the wind. Make sure you see the little wind on the horse. If you do, you're good. If not, double jump to try to adjust it. But what's really funny about this spot down here is that people were going crazy trying to figure out how to get down here. And there's such an easy, legit way of doing it. People were like coming up with all types of different cheeses to try to jump down. And I still see it today. When I look around on certain spots, I see all the blood stains of people trying to jump off and cheese it. It's so easy to get down here. If you kill that guy, you do get that, which is an Ash of War. There is an item here and a giant crab. We're going to avoid the crab. Now, I didn't bring this item up in the very first episode, but this is an item that almost everybody will see and everyone will scratch their head and go, how do you get that? And then you try to figure it out and you waste like an hour. Sometimes you waste days like me. Then you finally figure it out and you feel like a dummy. So this is the cave on the beach. If we come up here, this is the very first item you will probably see in the entire game. Because the moment you spawn in here, you're probably going to turn around and go, what's that up there? Well, that's how you get it. You got to drop down and you have to get it that way. Okay, so now I'm going to fast travel. I'm just thinking about where I want to go. I know where. We're going to go here. Let me show you. We're going to go from this angle, and we're going to go up. And basically, we're going to be invaded by an NPC. But we're going to start that Ronin guy's quest line officially. And we're also going to do some caves that are over here as well. So we're actually going to go do some dungeons finally. Yay! But I'm going to cut this ahead, and I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, now I said that you should be leveling up. And I haven't been, so let's level up. Now I'm going to get my strength to 25. And 25 is a good number. We're going to leave it there. We have that talisman. It's going to put us at 30. We need 30 for a great shield. So when we get it, we can use it right away. I'm going to upgrade that shield as well. But at this point, we're done with strength. We don't need to mess with it anymore. Vigor, if you're trying to level up and you don't know what to level up, Vigor is always good. Get this all the way up to 60. Anytime you're going to level up, if you want to level up, Vigor's good. And if not, if you want more damage, dump points into Dexterity. Get this up to 80. That's it, basically. That's all we need to do for now, or at least that's all you need to know. Later on, we can get more Endurance and stuff like that. But for now, Vigor and Dex is all we need, once you have the 25 strength. So, we are going to go down here. I'm really just using the beacon so I can see exactly where to go. Now, this NPC quest line is a little interesting because I kind of hate this part. Mainly because there is an invader that's going to come in. And the invader is going to try to kill you. And this guy is going to come and help us. But he takes like 30 seconds to come and help you. By the time that he actually comes to help you, a lot of people might just be dead. And if you're not dead, you probably already killed the invader. So it's kind of weird. He needs to like spawn in right away, in my opinion. I think they should patch that. But guess what? It doesn't matter. You can just go in, murder the invader, and then you can still talk to the guy. Anytime you get kicked off the horse, you're getting invaded by an NPC. That's what that always means. So I'm going to rush this thing. I'm going to do my Ash of War. And just completely destroy it. So lock on. Come here. Get smacked. God, I missed. One more hit though. There we go. Now the guy never came in, right? He never came in. If we run down to this cave, he will be chilling here and we can talk to him. 
And in fact, we could actually go and finish his quest right now because we already have all of the areas and we even have the graces. That's the crazy part. And I am actually thinking about making a video because right now, if you're watching this in the future, just know right at this moment, Arcane is like big. People are really into it. And I want to show how to get a really crazy blood build, an arcane build, right away. And you can get a plus 10 weapon or max weapon, and it's overpowered. But to do it, all you got to do is complete that guy's quest. And you can do it super early. And you already know you can get the plus 9 weapon well. You can also get the plus 10 weapon super quick. We're taking a little bit more time because we're actually going around doing all this stuff. But if I wanted to get a plus 10 weapon right away, I can just go right now. It'd take me like 20 minutes maybe. Okay, so I want to talk about something real quick. Because someone's going to ask at some point, how can you tell if a weapon is a special weapon or a normal standard weapon? Well, this is how you do it. If you look at a weapon and you see it says skill. So look at these weapons, right? They say skill. If you look at this weapon, unique skill. If you look at our weapon, unique skill. That means it's a special weapon. That might not be the rule for every single weapon, but generally speaking, that's the way you can tell. So we're going into this cave. Here it is on the map. And basically, there's going to be a dude in here. He's a merchant, and he's a troll. He's in every one of these games. Now, it's going to be a little dark in here, so let's use the lantern. We got it for that reason. Hit the grace, and let's explore. So there's going to be a bunch of like bandits in here. Now this cave is really short. All of these dungeons in the beginning are short. Oops, that was a trap. Come and get it. I love the AoE and this bastard poisoned me. Okay, well eat my sword and die. I think that might be all of them because if you trip the alarm, they're all going to come after you. But let's open the chest and why does it always have to be mushrooms? <sighs> okay, well, we're going to go to the boss now. Pretty much we're done with the cave. Very quick, very easy. And let's heal up because of the poison. And we're going to go in and there's no boss. Hmm. There is a chest though, so let's open the chest. Okay, and there are items in here, so pick that up and wait a minute, who's talking? Very strange. And it's Patches. This guy is in every one of the games, and he's always a troll. Now, you only have to hit him once, and boom. He's going to surrender, and you have to let him like finish talking. Don't attack him, otherwise you can kill him. And if you want to do his quest, don't attack him. And you also have to forgive him, too. Now, he needs to finish all his dialogue, and then I'm going to talk to him. But he is one of these NPCs that he moves around. And when he moves around, you can talk to him. He's going to give you a little bit of dialogue. And that's about it. His quest is only going to really start once he gets to the final location. And it just so happens that if you go to that location, all those other spots where you can find him and you can talk to him, it's going to all skip. And he's just going to go to the final location. So that's what I'm talking about. The quest is not going to get messed up because at that final location, we can do the quest. But am I going to go to every spot and talk to him? Probably not. I'm sorry. I just don't have time. I'm not going to bother to go to every spot. Make sure you forgive him. And then if you talk to him again, he is going to say, next time you come back, he will open up his shop. So all you got to do is just fast travel. When you're in a cave, you can't fast travel. But once you beat the boss... You can fast travel. So we're just going back to the cave and we'll run down and talk to him. And there are some items that we want to buy from him. Mainly, we want to buy a dagger. Now, you can find a dagger. You can also buy a dagger. Uh-oh. You can also buy one from the merchant at the round table. Any dagger is going to do. But I really think people are sleeping on this. I'm going to show you something really cool. So if we talk to him... And we can actually ask him about the bandits. And look at that. There's a weird chest over there. Hmm. Wonder what that could be. You can ask him about it. Don't open it yet, by the way. Make sure you talk to him. And basically, we can buy these. They're really cheap. They give us more XP. So that's nice. You can buy the cookbook. 
Let's buy the key as well. It's always nice to buy these to have them. And I'm going to buy this, the parrying dagger. Now this item up here is actually really good if you are kind of weak. And this is going to counter the very first real boss of the game. But the thing is, is that it's like 5,000 runes. And we're so overpowered, we do not need that. I'm not going to bother with that. Okay, so the reason why the parrying dagger is nice, or any dagger, is it's got low weight. 1.5, that's nothing. I'm checking my load, I have medium load. If I wanted to use this dagger, it would actually put me at heavy load, so we're going to equip this. Now real quick, I'm going to run back to the grace, because I'm going to put an Ash of War on this. And I really think some people are sleeping on this, because to me, this is a little ridiculous. Because there is this buff spell, it's like the best buff spell in the game. It affects you, it affects all your allies, so if you're playing co-op, you can buff your friends and your allies. It's crazy. And that is Golden Vow. The fact that you can get it like at the start of the game is also kind of crazy. It doesn't matter what you do for the scaling, I'm just going to do standard. We're not going to use the weapon itself. But basically, if we pull it out, at any point, we can just buff ourselves. It's going to give you an attack buff and a defense buff. And like I said, it gives it to the whole squad. The whole squad. And it's got a pretty good duration. Now, the spell is better. It's going to have a better duration as well. But, the spell requires 25 faith. 25. I'm not putting any points into faith. Not for a stupid buff spell. Especially one that I can literally just pull a dagger out. Use it. Switch back. And I'm good. So, this is a really nice little tech here. Definitely use it i'm telling you okay so i already talked to him what am i doing let's open up the chest what's in the chest i wonder uh-oh you're gonna get a cutscene here that cheeky bastard i told you he's a troll he always does this well we are trapped meaning we can't fast travel we have to get to a grace now in a way this is kind of good because there are some items that i missed and i talked about Let's go ahead and buff ourselves. Now when it comes to the bears, I always say the same thing. Be reactive. But in terms of the bears, um, I don't know. They attack a lot. They're super aggressive. So in a lot of ways, any chance you get to attack, just go for it. That's kind of your best strategy. So somewhere around here, um, that's where the map was. Do you remember that? Oh, here it is. There's another bear, and basically there's a bunch of items down there, so let's go and get all these items. I talked about this, if you stumble upon this, it can be super annoying because the bear can get on you, but being that we can kill the bear now, we should be good. Okay, see what I'm talking about? You see this? Just attack when you can attack. Honestly, that's the way to do it. Uh-oh. Oh, hello, another one. It's the baby bear. I know, right? How is that a baby? But pick all this up, and basically, yeah, there's a ton of items over here. But I'm pretty sure we're kind of good for, like, the basic items. Is that another one? Oh my god. Yeah, there's two of them here. Now, we can totally just go. We don't need to be doing this. You know what? I'm gonna drink that. Why not? That's my mix potion. Hello, bear eat my special attacks and die it's kind of worth killing them because they are worth a decent amount of xp but now let's get on our horse and i'm gonna come down here i'm gonna also get the grace but i told you guys you should go back to the fort to talk to that one guy well i didn't do it yet now if you've been following the guide and you're just kind of doing what i'm doing the whole time then you're good oh i just thought of something there is one other thing in this area there is Hopefully I can find it. Uh, man, I'm gonna have a trolley. Yes, here it is, right here. This is the real scarab I was talking about. So there's one real one in this area. The rest of them are all like FP and HP potions. Right here on the map, that's where I found it. But that's Ground Slam. I don't like it. Not a big fan. There is another one, though, called Golden Slam, and I think that one is awesome. Okay, so basically we're going to the fort so we can talk to that guy... If we talk to him, we can be done with him for a very long time. 
because of the patch they updated his quest they added like a couple more things now before i do anything let's go to the grace just to rest so that we're not trapped anymore now what's really weird about this fort by the way if you remember there was the knights in here and when you first came up here there's like some monkeys and they're trying to attack the fort and the knights are defending the fort well you go in there and you clear out the knights and now the guy comes back to retake the fort now what's really weird to me is that when you come back there's a ton of monkeys in here now that's fine they were trying to take the fort i guess i get it you know by the way they are called demi humans they're not really monkeys but look at them they're monkeys right but anyway the point is is that the guy is here and he's just chilling there and what's even weirder and this is why i think this guy is, is insane because he comes off as like weird and insane he doesn't even mention it i don't think he doesn't even bring up like oh my god you know did you see what's going on down there there's a billion monkeys down there like what dude like what are you doing why are you chilling here why aren't the monkeys coming up here just literally walk up the stairs and ripping your head off i don't get it maybe he's allies with them but go ahead and talk to him once he starts repeating himself you're done so that's it he's done we're done we can fast travel okay so where i want to go real quick i wanted to do more dungeons you know what we are we're gonna go here back to patches we can confront him about this and then we are going to go do another dungeon that's literally just outside and we gotta go up here that's where we're gonna go so i'm gonna cut this ahead i'm gonna see you guys in a moment all righty well let's go and talk to patches and confront him on what he did and he's going to always give you something whenever he trolls you as a way of making you not kill him but that's why a lot of people actually just like to murder patches no matter what because they get mad at him but he will give you an emote there calm down okay bro i am calm but we're gonna exit this cave and we're gonna go to this other cave well it's actually a catacombs it's actually going to be our first catacombs that we're gonna do and the catacombs are kind of trolly there are like some helper statues that will point you in the direction of catacombs if you're following the guide you don't actually need to use those but at the same time there's a reason they're in the game because these catacombs are always in like nooks and they're always like by mountains and even when you know they're there they can actually be hard to see now when you find jellyfish and they're blue they're friendly don't attack them if they're red murder them that's basically the rule but we can just go buy all this stuff and pick up some mushrooms. Why is it always mushrooms? But here's the door for the catacombs. Now, this is going to be a very short and easy one. But some of these are complicated and they have like some crazy puzzles in them. Not really puzzles, but like ways you have to go where you really have to think. But the enemies in here oh man the enemies are annoying there's always 50 of them as well these gargoyles now they should bounce off your shield and if they do you can guard counter them now the item i'm picking up is an important item we need that to upgrade our summons so we're going to collect them watch out there's always one hiding somewhere so just watch your back that's the main Thing. now we could probably hit this switch well it would have worked if we would lure them over to us there's gonna be like a billion of them in here come here one hit should kill them we're so op i'm gonna do a running attack and is that it please let it be it but in every catacomb we have to find a lever and it's gonna open a set of heavy doors now that little message that's gonna pop up where it's gonna tell you a set of heavy doors have opened watch out there's more gargoyles over here hello oh my god leave me alone see how when you're not locked on you get some freedom where you can actually like attack in a bunch of different ways well you can also miss a lot too but whenever you see that message it's the same thing with those stone 
sword keys. When you use one of those, a message is going to pop up. You need to hit triangle, and if you hit triangle, then you can go ahead and get rid of the message. If you don't hit triangle, what's going to happen is you can't roll, you can't block, you can't attack. It's crazy. It can get you killed. If you're being attacked by a bunch of enemies, you can be completely obliterated. So just watch out. And yeah, this guy's pretty cool. I love his intro. But as you can see, our little combo, the wombo combo, completely destroys him. Okay, well, that's basically it for this place. Now we can get out of here. Now to be honest with you, I wanted to go to every dungeon and do them all in this episode for this first area. But I'm starting to realize that this episode is going to be very long if I do that. So, what I'm probably going to do is just do a little bit more, and then I'm going to end it. In the next episode, we'll finish up this first little bit. But this lower bit down here, I do consider this the first area. So we'll go and do all of this as well. And then by episode 4, we will do the side castle, which is down here. And we'll do the main castle, which is up here. So that will be the plan. And then we can actually get our weapon to plus 10. Now hopefully I can actually get that done in episode 4. But we'll see. Because the castles are kind of complicated. There's like a billion different ways to go. They're really, really epic in this game. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Stormhill Shack. We're going to go up here. We're going to go up here. We're going to go down here. There's a bunch of places to go. I'm going to make sure I get all of these items. I have them marked just because I would forget them if I didn't have them marked. So I'm going to cut this ahead. I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Now, I do want to show you guys something real quick. If you want to go and get it, I'm not going to go and get it. To me, this is one of those waste of time. But if you come over here where this mountain is, there's the shack. Here's the mountain. If you follow the wall, there's going to be a part you can jump up. There's a ton of jellyfish. If you go over there, you can get like a smithing stone level one and you can get some magic grease. I think that's all that's over there. So correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not going to go get it. If you want to go get it, you can. Now, if we actually come behind the shack, so the shack's there, just drop down down here. There's a field and this is another kind of pointless item, but it is a smithing stone level one. We can pick that up. Let's head north, and if we head north, we are going to see that in the distance. It's so dusty, we can't really see it, but there is a hill. That's what we're looking for, is the hill. If we go up the hill, there's going to be a giant up here. If we take him out, we don't really have to fight him, but it's a thousand XP. I want it. So let's murder him. Come here. And die. Just circle around and do your light attacks. It works like a charm. But right here, this is one of the mixed potion things. Definitely one of the important items. That's the strength one. What that's going to do is give you 10 strength when you drink your mixed potion for 3 minutes. Pretty good. So if you come down this way, I'm going to show you on the map. We're heading towards this thing. There's going to be an NPC invader. And we're going to pretty much take that out. There's also an item back here. It's for PvP. It's worth getting just in case. Even if you feel like you're never going to PvP. Come over here and get it. Just because you never know. It's your dueling sign. So if you want to do duels with people. They can summon you. And you can fight your friends. Or you can fight random people. So let's just wombo combo this guy. And of course I timed that horribly. Mm -mm. There we go. And boom. Easy peasy, Japanesey. So we're gonna get a talisman for that. Let's pick this up. That's the red sign. So now we can be summoned for some PvP and stuff. And now let me take a look at my map. Let's get rid of this. And I want to come up here to get this. So I think this is probably the best way to go. But it's gonna be up on this mountain. There's actually a grace over here as well. I'll try to show you the grace. I think there's a grace oh never mind i am mistaken there is not a grace but let's try to go over there to get this item this is another talisman it's actually a pretty okay one in my opinion 
it's going to up your damage while you are on the horse. And because you're going to be on the horse fighting all the time, it can have its uses. Um, okay, I'm in the wrong spot. That's death if we drop down there. So we need to figure out how to get down so we can keep going. Let me put a beacon, maybe? That might help. It always helps. So I bet you that's not death. Let's take the gamble. Nope. I'm telling you, I'm always so worried about any of these drops because you never know. And it's going to happen to you, I promise. You're going to drop off and you're going to think, oh, that's perfectly fine. Like, there's no way I'm going to die. And you die. And then other times you're going to fall off and you're like, how the hell did I survive? That seems so far. It just, it really blows your mind. It's inconsistent. So, right here, dead body. Let's pick it up. Come on. That's the Lance Talisman. And I believe that one ups your damage while on the horse. Let's check it real quick. Yep, that's what it does. Like I said, it's actually not bad. If you're going to fight a boss or something on your horse, definitely worth maybe putting on. So at this point, we're in combat. We can't get our map up. But now, I'm going to go and fight what I consider to be the hardest one of these mini bosses in this entire area. There is a dragon. We will fight it at some point. It's down here. And this boss, in my opinion, is harder than the dragon. Now, if you follow my little strategy, you are going to destroy it. But before we do that, wait a minute, since I'm here anyway, let's do this. Here's another catacombs. Now, there's a couple ways of getting here. The way that I went, obviously you can get here. You can see it dead on the map right here. But from this Saint's Bridge, if you follow the road, you can basically turn around and go up a rock, and then you can come this way. Maybe I'll show that real quick. I want to show this stuff so that you guys know exactly where to go. Because it can be confusing. So down here, here's the road. If you were going this way, remember that camp? We did that earlier. If you just turn around, there's some rocks. And then, of course, it can be hard to see, but you always got to look. And boom, here's the catacomb. So let's go and do this real quick just because it's here. Let's get it done. Okay, so there's the giant door. And... You're going to get so many of these upgrades. They're plants, and they're going to upgrade your summon. But you're going to get so many of these. But this is the first time we're going to fight skeletons for real. Whenever you kill them, you have to hit them again to keep them dead. Sometimes, in some of these catacombs, there will be summoners. At least that's what I call them. And what they are, they will keep these skeletons alive. You have to kill that enemy if you want to take the skeleton out. So, why is that one dead? Okay. There's like a billion of these skeletons in here, by the way. So, be ready for that. Lots and lots of skeletons. Take him out. Look at that. There's so many of them. Now, there's actually something pretty cool in here, to be honest. Especially if you did not start with it. This is where you can actually get a katana. So, if you didn't start as the samurai and you want to get a katana, R... If you do start as a samurai and you might want to dual wield katanas, you can actually come here and get a second one like right away. So if we come down this way, watch out, you know there's going to be skeletons or something in here. Let's grab this. Oh, hello! Of course! Take all of them out and finish them off. And we are good, but we got those items. If we come down this way, here we go. There is a skeleton. <laughs> a skeleton. There is one, but I, I got the katana. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, the katana is a skeleton. I think it's because I was looking at the skeleton. That's pretty funny. But we're going to drop down. Of course, there's like a billion skeletons in here. So let's go ahead and try to take them out. I don't know what's going on. Like, it's so dumb. I hate skeletons. I've always hated them in all these games. Yeah, I mean, look. Clearly, I knew that was a dead skeleton, like, but you can't hit it. You have to let it get up? Like, what? That's so dumb. And now we got one shooting me. I can't do anything about that, but it's cool. I got an arrow in my head. Let's go ahead and just juke, juke, juke. And hit this. Oh, look at that. There's some skeleton bones there. I wonder, is that going to come alive? Maybe not. But there is an item in here. Let's pick that up. 
Now, anytime. Oh my god. So many skeletons. I'm not dealing with that. I'm sorry. We're just going for it. Anytime you're doing one of these catacombs, if you have taken a ton of damage and you need to like restore your potions, once you open the door, you can always just go back to the grace. So that is something. That's the nice thing about the catacombs is that you can always do that. The door is almost always by the grace, so that's good. Okay, now this boss though here, in this particular one, is kind of annoying. I'm gonna be honest, I do not like these bosses. They're kind of scary to, to be perfectly frank, but these are the Black Knives. Oh my god, some of these can be overpowered. Now this one is a joke. The very first one, like all of these bosses, is a joke. Hello, backstab. But you're going to fight some of these later on, and they are not a joke. If we actually open up the chest, though, we can get our second death root. So that is cool. Okay, now that we've got that out the way, another dungeon is complete. Let's go down here, and we will pretty much fight this boss, and I think I'm going to call it there. That will be the end of this episode, because like I said, this boss is actually one of the hardest if not the hardest boss in this area the only other boss i would say that's as hard especially if you're weak if you're weak and you're trying to do this boss he's gonna kick your ass i am serious the only other bosses that are like as strong as this guy are the bosses from the actual real castle of this area i know i'm like hyping him up and i'm gonna destroy him but i'm telling you right now like People struggle. I've seen people, like, just rage at this guy. When I did him for my very first time, I did beat him fairly quickly. Yes, it took me multiple attempts, but I did have a halberd, and I just kept poking him to death. But my friends, they had some real trouble with this guy. So much so that one of my friends gave up and waited until much later in the game and he came back and murdered it in two seconds because he was so strong but I mean that's kind of how it goes right okay so there's enemies in here I'm gonna show you on the map where I'm at this is another talisman this one is for your arrows and your bows so that's cool I guess let's go ahead and pull up the map I can remove this now but it's basically right here. It's very confusing because it looks like we're by the grace or we're by this. We're not. We're above it. And all you got to do to get over here is just go to where the circle disc is. That's it. I hear, I definitely hear a scarab. Yep, okay, it's that one. That's an HP one. I kind of wish they weren't in the game because it can be so confusing and it will happen to you. It's happened to me. You're looking for a skip for like 10 minutes. You're like, where is this thing? You finally find it. And you're like, it's an HP potion one? I wasted all my time? Really? So the moment you come in here, until you walk forward, the boss will not spawn. So you can pretty much just chill here. But the main thing we're going to do is we are going to go crazy. We're going to go super aggressive. Do your L2, R2 and do it like three times so i'm even going to suggest to restore our fp so we can spam it so let's run in he's going to spawn but he's going to just be walking forward do that now he does block and that is annoying when he blocks he can shield bash you now we're just looking for an opportunity to attack anytime we get a chance we can do it that is the best time right there that is the absolute best time is when he two hands so if you really want to like play it safe, wait for the two hand. You can block all of this stuff. He does have a tail attack as well. So if you just wait for the two hand, I'm telling you, you can get some big damage on him. I'm trying to bait him out because remember, you want to be reactive always. So if you can bait out an attack, here we go. When he stomps, he's going to two hand, let him two hand, back away. When he's done, smack him big damage we can go back in to get some more big damage and now just run but he's gonna fly just block it even if he breaks our guard it's all good run in and finish him off so even though i'm super overpowered he still like could have killed me potentially he really could have 
And that just goes to show that he's pretty tough. He's actually worth like 10,000 or he's worth quite a bit of runes. I could be tripping. It might have been 5,000. But it's definitely not bad. Like I said, out of all of the mini bosses, including the dragon of this first area, I do think that he probably is the hardest one. Alrighty guys, well I think that's going to do it for this episode. I really hope that you have enjoyed it and it has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? It really helps me out. I really do appreciate it. And also be sure to subscribe for future episodes of this series. If you do, make sure to click the bell. That way you can stay notified. Thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day. And peace out.